So, this was inevitable. Look, I'm going to talk about how I approach theorizing because I think some people might be misinterpreting it. This is going to be a uh, very low production video. I'll probably just have one clip the entire background while I'm talking. So this is more of one to listen to rather than watch, just letting you know ahead of time. When it comes to theorizing, the way I approach it is what makes the most narrative sense. Because say what you want about FNAF, but it is still a story at the end of the day. Which is how I came to the conclusion of Mexus being glitch trap. It solves a lot of plot holes and issues and just other things, you know? If Mexus is glitch trap, we get an explanation for why Roxy just suddenly snaps out of character, which is never explained. If Mexus is glitch trap, then we have an actual excuse to get rid of him rather than saying, eh, Princess Quest probably did it. You know, and that's mostly how I approach theorizing just because. With that, you can get a complete story out of it. And it's also why you've never seen me touch the Mimic. As it stands, the Mimic in-game is just a plot device. <laughs> yeah, I know that probably isn't what you want me to say, but I haven't touched the Mimic with a 10-foot pole because what am I meant to say on him? There's nothing in-game about him other than he's a whiny child. As it stands, he's just a plot device to try and get rid of Burn Trap. And that didn't even fucking work properly because, you know, there's no potential lead. it is burn trap, but that's a story for a different day. It's also why I said prototype should just be Glamrock Freddy from the base game. You get more out of it if it is. Because if it isn't, you have to come up with like 14 different theories to try and get around the fact that it just fucking spawns in. Whereas if it's just Glamrock Freddy, then most of the issues with it are solved already. You know? How does it get to Feather Blast? How does it damage that way? It's already solved. <laughs> Heck, when it comes to which ending I pick, the reason why I didn't, the reason why I said Burn Trap was basically out of the question, is because the evidence we have is saying that. Now, while I was on stream the other day, streaming my playthrough of Security Reach, where we accidentally solved uh, ruin. Oops. There's this one guy in the comment section, and I'm I'm happy to talk about this. I'm not trying to say to attack him or anything, but he did get me thinking with the rubble outside of a. Uh, the burn trap boss area. Now it's interesting because that's evidence that's never been brought to my attention before. And yeah, that is some pretty solid evidence right there. If it wasn't for the fact we know that Tangle was down here and Tangle tunneling out is what caused the tragedy at the Pizzaplex. The Pizzaplex is brought into room by an earthquake, but we see the Tangle tunnels throughout the game. You see it at the beginning of the game, you see it right before you go into Roxy Raceway, you see it you see it underground. In fact, the Tangle tunnel is the one that we walk through on our way to the burn trap boss area. But as it stands, I still say Princess Quest is the canon ending just because you get more out of it. And I, I guess this is where I should explain Princess not Cassidy. So as I brought up in that video, my pr my problem with Princess Cassidy is just how out of fucking nowhere it is. What I mean by that is, there's no real build up in game for it being Cassidy, outside of some files. And the game itself presents issues with it, such as by saying it was a mobile game. Meaning either the golden color doesn't matter, or she ends on thousands of mobile phones. Which, even Glitchtrap seems limited to the Fazbear Entertainment, you know, network, so I wouldn't know about that. And ultimately, I'm making this video because, like, it's kind of why I haven't really tackled the older games. Because with the older games, a lot of the most popular theories don't really feel that narratively, you know, satisfying. Like, say, Molten MCI? Yeah, that's a fun one to bring up. It's not that Molten MCI doesn't work, it absolutely does. It's just the evidence people present for it is kind of flimsy at best. You know, oh, Candy Cadet, but then we get to ruin it. Candy Cadet has like a five part story focusing exclusively on the Mimic. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with that. And even then, those three stories don't directly point to at Molten MCI, they point to like a bunch of other things. Only one of them really points to Molten MCI in any way. It's... I'm not getting into it here. Or say. Stitch Line. My problem with Stitch Line is that it literally opens up on a retcon, which isn't really that narratively satisfying, especially when it's never been talked about since. You'd think something like the Stitch Roof would make it into Help Wanted with how recent it was, but nope, have Fun Time Freddy in the FNAF 4 house because fuck you, I guess. I know that some of the Frights things do appear in Security Breach, mostly the arcade rooms. And so I say it's probably Fright's fiction, which makes the most sense to me. Anyway, look, the point of this video is for me to explain how I approach theorizing, because I know it is different to how a lot of other people approach theorizing. And it's also why this damn uh, Gregbot video I'm making is taking so long. 
because there's a lot to break down with Gregbot. Like, almost too much. Like, people keep trying to bring up things that don't actually relate to it. It, it can save, be saved for them. But my point is, I approach the Rising by trying to figure out what makes the most narrative sense. So, say, Roxy snapping out of her character because Glitchtrap is still around in Mexus. Yeah, I think that works. Post the cutscene where, you know, you get Roxy out of whatever the hell she was doing. Mexus can't spawn Roxy anymore, meaning he's, you know, meaning she's disconnected from it. And while Chica completely powers down and Monty gets fucking murderized. There is no explanation for Roxy unless she's just disconnected, you know? And heck, same goes for Glamrock Freddy. Something I forgot to mention, and I don't think I'll be able to show it here because I don't have the footage on hand. But if you go into a uh, Feather Blast, you don't get jump scared by uh, ruined Freddy with the, and you put the mask on for too long. You get jump scared by a random Endo that isn't even there because Mexus can't call on him because, you know, he isn't connected to the Mexus network. So I hope you understand how I approach the Arising now a little better. And until next time, please take care. Bye.